welcome to the D3 D4 Football Podcast with me, your host, James Richards. It's Sunday, the 5th of December 2021. Welcome back to another D3 D4 Football Podcast. This week on the show, we have three managers to talk about uh, Ipswich departing from Paul Cook, Doncaster deciding to call time on Richie Wellens' time at the club, which is not a surprise. And Stevenage have picked Paul Tisdale as the man to take them forward, though clearly not in the FA Cup. Uh, we also have a couple of League One games to briefly brush over, including uh, unfortunate events that took place between Accrington and Fleetwood yesterday. And we have your questions in the mailbag. Also, <laughs> some, some good ones in there um, to go through. I am joined this week as always, by a ream of co-hosts who are dedicated fans of the lower leagues. Ed Walker, uh, although your team decided not to be a dedicated I wish I fan. wasn't a fan of a lower league club. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, you lost yesterday in the FA Cup. Uh, something Oxford decided to get out of the way early in a in a very mad extra time period against Bristol Rovers, which I'm still hurting over, so I'll stop talking about that. Uh, Chris Stringer is joining us, the Oldham fan who was spared a match yesterday with his team deciding to generously not play on a Saturday for the first time in a while. It, it, it was very, very good of them. And, and David, welcome as well. Gillingham fan. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, just the just the sheer fact of saying Gillingham fan is about as much joy as I can get. I'm noticing right the blue clubs second. on this pod don't really have a good time at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. But... Still, I'm like, great. I mean... We have it a, a little bit better, and I'm taking that while it can be. Indeed, indeed. Right, so big shout out to our patrons, uh, as always, who support this podcast and make it possible for us to bring you uh, a audio hour of lower league ramble every week. Really appreciate your guys' support. You can be a patron for as little as one pound or one dollar, your choice, per month. So twelve pound a year to get uh, to get supporting us for what is essentially a a really insightful. Um, podcast, though David does like to state the obvious, we think that's an invaluable part of keeping us on track <laughs> and as well we are partners with The Big Step who are doing great work in uh, bringing to people's attention the dangers of this gambling advertising over overload in football which is something that we would like to see disappear uh, sadly quite a, a lot of attention has been, in, been paid well not sadly about the attention but sadly the news of course of people have been taking their own lives due to gambling debts. Uh, a lot of them uh, just really suffering because of the, the the hook that they they were sucked into during uh, watching football and other sports. It's really sad to see. So it is important that we get a grip on this. And football does not need to be sponsored by gambling everywhere. And you know, literally, I think every podcast now I listen to is sponsored by some oh, sort I of. Do my head in. There's yeah. always like you know, one of them screaming at you. So it's a, it's it's unnecessary. So hopefully this is a refreshing change for some of you who uh, who li- listen to us regularly. Uh, without further ado, then let's jump in to the the latest breaking news. Uh, we'll start with the most uh, the, the most fresh. We're very kind of Ipswich Town to do this before we recorded the pod. But Paul Cook has been dismissed as Ipswich manager. I'm surprised about this. I'll be honest. Yeah, um, me too. I know things haven't gone as planned. Let's you know let's. Let's not pretend they 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 would have been expecting to do a lot better. Um, however, he's got a great record at this level, and I'm not sure who they can get who will do better. Chris, you, you weighed in uh, on this one because it's it is a surprise, it is a shock. Yeah, I mean we've spoken that Ipswich haven't had the the start that we hoped for. I mean they've made some decent signings over the summer. Looked like they had a relatively strong squad. And, no doubt they have underperformed, but I don't think they've underperformed to the extent that a managerial change is needed. Um, and I'm not sure what they're going to completely achieve with this. They've got new structures in at the club, new ownership. 20 new managers. players over the summer. Um, yeah, I mean, give, give, a, give a bit of time. I think things are going roughly in the right direction. It just requires patience. Maybe a, It feels like a knee-jerk reaction. A nil-nil draw with Barrow could can tip people over the top, I, I guess. <laughs> um, it does. That does seem to me to be a little bit over the over the top, though, to sack him. Ed, your, your thoughts on this? I mean, we know Ipswich should probably be doing a lot better given the resources and squad, but at the moment, as we are recording this, they they're not completely out of a playoff picture. 
you know, they, they could still have a late charge. Uh, I say late charge, you know, halfway through the season, actually. We're not even there yet. So there's still plenty of time for this to be turned around. It feels like the reaction to this has been a bit of a mixed bag. Some people getting it and some people not understanding it. And I, I kind of see both sides of it, certainly. You know, it's not just the results that have been off. The performances haven't been great either. They've been scraping wins against opponents that you just really expect them to do with the immense amount of quality that was in that squad. A really, really bad start to the season with them down the relegation zone, miles off where they want to be. And yes, they have picked up, but they still look a long way off where we expect them to be. And I think where a lot of other people expect them to be as well. The way I feel, I think you feel the same, James. I'm not quite sure who you get in that's of the level of Paul Cook. You know, he's a, we know how outstanding a manager he is, and I've no doubt he'll find another job whenever and wherever he wants it. I think Ipswich are going to do very well to get someone in who could recreate his his caliber and ability level in management whilst they're still a League One club at the moment. Yeah, that, that's my that's my big take out from this. It's not necessarily. I'm also sorry just to to button again. I'm a little bit concerned that like. I think the big one for me is that maybe the appointment that comes in next either doesn't change things or sends things backwards. I'm a little bit worried about that. I know that um, Mark Ashton's currently in as the CEO, and I remember seeing under response to the announcement that Paul Cook was leaving, there were quite a few Bristol City fans who were familiar with Mark Ashton as the CEO who were kind of just rolling their eyes at it, saying, we've seen this coming, this has happened before. So it's a little bit of worry for me, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was about, yeah. I mean, my takeaway I was going to say is, is exactly what you, you just suggested, like, Paul Cook is a tried, tested, and very successful manager. Um, he ripped apart the squad. That was his choice, fair enough. He brought in 20 new players. Again, his decision, his team. And it's not gone as well as hoped. But it's not been a complete disaster. Performances, though, I, I agree, they've been kind of lacking that that focus, that... Um, I don't know what you call it. I mean... It, it, his teams play with an intensity and a purpose, and they've lacked that, which is a bit of a concern. But it's not to the point where I would say, right, we're done and dusted. But it also suggests that Ipswich ownership see this as an immediate, you know, an yeah. immediate problem, and that they want to get promoted this season. But like you say, if you get in a manager now and he doesn't fancy some of these players, or he, he I don't know. It's difficult to see how they there's, go for There's forward. some interesting names certainly floating about already around him. Whether I think they're actually achievable or not for it switch well, to get, it, or whether it's worth moving is a different story. I, I any, suppose it depends. Any, see? Sorry, are any, any of those names, any that you, you, you really would like to see? Well, there's, there's talk, you know, the usual suspects come up. I've, I've seen people discussing Liam Manning, Ryan Lowe, people doing incredibly well with the clubs, and to be honest, I kind of hate to see them move on from a project that's not completed yet and going so well for them. So I'm, I'm really name, curious to see who they bring in. The other name I saw this morning, who obviously isn't having such a great time at the moment, is Michael Appleton as well. Um, so I was doing a bit of research into that. And the, the main ones I found that seem to be that make his favourites is either Manning or Appleton at the moment. For well, the Appleton shop. obviously worked with Ashton uh, at um, Oxford. That's the link. I mean, and Appleton was linked to... A move to Bristol City before um, they. I can't remember. Really, they appointed the assistant manager, I think, to to take over. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, but that, that oh, was, oh, Holden. Holden, that's right. Yeah. So it was, yeah. there was a definite link. You know, people, Bristol City fans, saying I, I, because I put, I broke that story. People saying <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was talking about. But it was, it was genuinely true. In the boardroom at Bristol, uh, Bristol City, Ashton wanted to bring in Appleton. Other people wanted a, a bigger name, and in the end, they settled for uh, for oh. like you know a man who had been there anyway, and, and so it didn't. A really... man who took Oldham from the brink of the playoffs to mid table. Mm. In the end, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> but there you go. So we shall we shall wait with bated breath, but uh, interesting decision, I'll say. And the Ipswich fans entitled, I think, to to their opinions, and there's been a right mixed bag. So um, some, like Ed said, understand it; some don't. Ed saying he, he gets both sides of the argument, so he understands it but doesn't, which is which is really good. <laughs> uh, Doncaster parting from Wellens, we, the writing was on the wall, wasn't it? For yeah. this? I mean, yeah. it had to, it had to yeah. happen, and I struggle to see where Wellens goes from here now. Yeah, it's it is because I mean, because I mean, you know, I've spoken how I like this style of football, but ultimately, we, he was relegated with Oldham, he failed at Swindon, he's now failed at Doncaster. Well, he didn't fail at that, Swindon; he got them promoted. 
under Lee Power. So he, yeah, okay. Um, so he was but... a huge success at Swindon. What I would say is that um, I question sometimes his man management skills. He he seems to be a guy with a very set way of wanting to do things. He's he, he definitely has a big ego. You, you can just tell. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes that can be working your favour though as well. It can. But... It depends on the players you're working with as well, though, doesn't it? Like, if you've got a squad that have got relatively big names or, like, big egos themselves, then having a manager in that position... Well, he throws out, he throws out Butler. Would be fine, but... Which, you know, Andy Butler is a Doncaster legend, I guess. I mean, he's he's been a great servant to the club, and he throws him out, which I thought, when you need experience in a young team, um, it's not good in, in fact... Sorry, I'm, I meant Salford, not Swindon. <laughs> Salford, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I forgive you. Uh, there is um, an interesting take on this by, I think it's Adam Stubbings who, who writes on Into the Empty Net, I think it is. Uh, but he he wrote an article. And yeah, basically, he wasn't helped by awful recruitment. Uh, he wasn't helped by um, the fact that some of the players they got in on loan clearly aren't League One calibre. You know, and so he can't take the entire blame. He can't take the entire blame for this. But... Um, he has had this problem at every club now. Um, and at some point, it only you can you can only make the argument so many times, I guess, when he continues to take the jobs as well, knowing that that's the challenge. Who do we want, or who do we th- like the thought of taking over a club like Doncaster in the situation they're currently in? It, it looks um, like a job for experience, doesn't it? <laughs> given the situation, Keith there's, I mean, there's two names I've seen linked. On foot, well, Steve Evans has been linked, but then again, he's been, but then again, he's been linked to the Ipswich job as well. Um, I think, oh, I think, come on, seriously. I think, he, and then, I think him, and, him and his agent are just sticking his name in everything. Else, I, yeah, who knows? But then uh, the other name that I've heard is uh, Simon Weaver to, to be linked to that Doncaster role as well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I couldn't see him leaving at Harrogate for Doncaster. I can. Not. I not think he'd be making a mistake but, doing that. Then I again, it really that. depends on it. Really depends on the offer on the table, doesn't it? If they offer him, if they give him the potential to to then get out of that position, and do, do we think that he could actually do that if he took the over thing there? Is, though, like is it Harrogate, beneficial for him? Yeah, Harrogate's a family club. Though he's working for his dad at Harrogate, who runs the club. <laughs> he's not going to get sacked there. He's got to say. And I feel like the, because of his allegiances, the only club that's actually going to turn his head is Sheffield Wednesday, because that's his boy too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that Wednesday at, came at calling, Harrogate, he'd be yeah. looking at it, but I don't think Doncaster appeals to him at the moment. Any Especially other, I was doing with Harrogate. Any other names, guys? <sighs> Difficult, huh? It's not an easy job to take. I mean it's a God, I don't I don't I think to be honest, if you take the job you're preparing for League Two. Great, I really Grayson? struggle to see Doncaster getting out of this. Yeah. Grayson? Grayson's stock is really low for <laughs> no. I mean I, I I I wouldn't say he's a good choice, but I could see it. No. No, 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 and no. I just, if you're a Doncaster fan, you just would not want that, I'm sure. Um, Is there any way that we'd be looking at a potential internal appointment? That we'd be looking at someone from inside the club to take over until the end of the season? I don't think he's got the. I don't think the staff there. No disrespect to them, because I'm not. I'm not clued in. But I don't think they would be looking to do that. I think they need someone who. Who's, who's got some leadership and motivation experience? Like, someone like Coppinger. <laughs> well, that's why I did think Coppinger. Yeah, but um, it's a bit of a poison chalice. A bit like Ips- Ipswich for now, to me, is a poison chalice job because you're going in after Paul Cook with huge expectations, um, and it's it, it's it does look like it's going to be a massively. Do you think the expectations are the same at Doncaster because it's a you're, you're working from a. I don't think that, I, I, just, if you like the, I, I just think you're not likely to improve them this season unless yeah, you have a stonking January, which you might because I mean they can't have a worse January than they did summer. That would take some doing. <laughs> that really would. Yeah, to be fair. Um, we shall wait and see. On bated breath, who takes over? But not a great time at the club. Uh, been real, real poor, sort of eighteen months or so, I'd say, for Doncaster. Uh, Stevenage, they go for Paul Tisdale. What an appointment. I, I kind of like it, but then it's you know we, we've got to look at. Tisdale's. Think you're on your own with that, James. Well, maybe. I like. I, we, well, Chris, Chris likes it. There I, like, you go, I so. like it. I think that's a good appointment. Last two clubs, though, you have to look at. MK Dons uh, got them up, but he did have a big budget to do that, and then struggled once they were in League One. Though he, I think I seem to remember it was like he had no strikers available at all because of injuries. 
but then didn't do very well at all at Bristol Rovers. But again, like no one, no one did that season. Um, he, he, he didn't even win the club according to Barton. No, he, that was uh, Gar- that was uh, that was Garner apparently. Garner. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, not apparently. Tisdale. Um, but he's he's got a lot of experience at this level. Uh, did well with Exeter. Never quite, never quite got them up. Oh, he, well, he did, he did, didn't he? He got them up and they came back down again. Am I right in thinking that? Under Tisdale, I, I'd have been happy if he ended up at Oldham. I'll put it that way. He's a considered and and kind of philosophical bright chap, but you know, it's I don't know. Ed, go on. You're, you're in the anti Tisdale camp, along with quite a few Seabridge fans that I've seen as I, well. I'm just still uninspired by it, really. Who would you who would you have gone with instead of him then? What, like what kind of manager? <laughs> Steve Evans. <laughs> oh dear. No, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like when people bring up Tisdale now and bring up the positives, they bring up the things from the jobs, not his most recent jobs. You know, you bring up his time with Exeter, which was an incredibly long period. I always think of Tisdale as being like the guy you you want him in a job the thought five years. Is he really going to be at Stevenage the thought five years? I don't. It's just it see doesn't feel I mean, like that's is, really going to happen. Is, I mean, is does, anyone, does anyone? Does anyone? Hardly it happens to managers anymore. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I saw John, I John McGreal, by John by McGreal who I thought would be a good take for, for Stephen, who's actually now part of the under-23 setup at Ipswich. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's OK. Point. We'll see. We'll see. I think they've got a lot of work to do looking at how pretty pretty poor they played against Yeovil yesterday in the Cup. So It's, it's not Salim Benisher anyway. Although you did beat Sunderland's <laughs> reserves in the EFL Trophy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <clears throat> I have to say that shout out Harry Vaughan played really well in that game and scored a scored a goal just through pure persistence. It was a very very mature goal, I thought. Yeah, I thought he harassed the defender well, got won the ball and and slotted it slotted in nicely. And Nicky Adams' Tom Cup field was measured to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, so yeah, mixed reaction for Paul Tisdale. Interesting if Stephen Lynch fans want to get their take in. It's at D three D four football on Twitter. Um be interesting to hear what you think. I mean obviously a bit of time needed there. Do we think anyone's going to get sacked in the time from recording this podcast to releasing it? Probably. Yes. Who do you think it would be? Anybody? That's a good question. Mark Cooper? Although they did draw at Ipswich. Well, uh, after yeah. a draw, no. <clears throat> Cowley's, uh, maybe? <laughs> they lost to Harrogate, didn't they, in the cup? <laughs> no, they're, they're safe. Their league form's been brilliant. It's true, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm, they might maybe, be so. maybe at a push, Lincoln will pull the trigger on Appleton. I yeah. don't think we want them to do it. They'd be but foolish. Maybe. I, could, I could see it. Yeah. No, they'd be foolish to do that, frankly. And that doesn't mean they won't do it, though. No. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's been there's been appointments in the past, haven't there, or sackings that have definitely not worked out. But I think in terms of Appleton. I do agree. I think him staying at Lincoln and riding through this form would be the better thing. But well, he only, is a I think very he just reactionary needs, game he, these days, isn't it? So yeah, he needs just, and, and he needs teams another, are very reactionary. He needs another window for me because like, he's a very good recruitment history. Don't you know? Don't judge him on just purely this summer where things have gone awry. Not just because of people players letting him down a little bit from where you'd expect. He he lost a lot of key men from last season. He's had. Three or four very important players, you know, who you consider the spine of this team injured. So it's it's not as straightforward as saying it's all his fault. Uh, ultimately, the buck stops with him, and um, he won't be shying away from that. But I I feel it would be a mistake to to just get rid of him at this stage. I know there's a few fans at uh, at Lincoln who disagree with me. That's fine, but uh, I'm uh, obviously very biased and pro Appleton. So there you go. <laughs> Right, let's uh, let's jump in and quickly discuss the two matches that took place yesterday in League One. League One. Accrington absolutely thumped Fleetwood 5-1, 10 man Fleetwood. This is a weird league that Accrington could get thumped and then thump on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> what a weird division. This is. <laughs> well, if you were an Accrington fan walking through the town, you may have been thumped by a Fleetwood fan, by uh, oh, some of the. That's uh, not so bad. It's called Duggery that. You hope to uh, disappear from the game. I just wish people would grow up. Honestly, just grow up. You know, pathetic. Going walking through a town and thumping. I mean, apparently a 14... I mean, I haven't got this as a fact. This is only something I've seen on Twitter. But apparently a 14-year-old is in hospital. 
Uh, just disgraceful behaviour as well. I mean, there's no doubt that they smashed up the away end toilets. Um, Andy Holt putting out a photo of the damage. Path- absolutely pathetic. That club, um, I'm talking about Accrington here, are nothing but accommodating to away fans. Great work. That was, it, was, there, was there any reason? Like, was there, was there anything that set off this other, other than just There's never any people. reason. They just do it because they're idiots. It's, it's, it's oh, yeah. the loss, isn't it's it? They're, 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 yeah, I was wondering right. if it, they're they're they've lost they're 5 1 or. That's, There's no excuse, though. Absolutely no, no, absolutely not. You know, I've been to games where Oxford lost seven one. I've never had any propensity to go and smash up a toilet block. I mean, or anyone walking past me in an away shirt, for that matter. You know, honestly, just I, I, Andy Holt has come out with a, a thread where he's basically saying the bill will be sent to Fleetwood, fr- quite rightly. Yeah. And Andy Pilly's son was was uh, you know. Should have kept his mouth shut, really. Well, really... he's an interesting bloke, isn't he, from yeah. what I've seen? What did he say? He was on Twitter, atting Andy Holt, saying, where's the evidence? This is You're basing this on hearsay. No, it's not on hearsay. There's photographic evidence of the of away the toilet being smashed. Smashed to, smashed to pieces. I mean, you know, and this is a kid that uh, was done for hooligan and wallet with England fans, I think, in Holland. Is that right? Something like that in Amsterdam. Through a bottle at police, you know, so... Um, obviously, I don't know. Can't tire him like that. But honestly, just like don't don't yeah, try and defend yeah. this. Uh, you know, the mature thing here is to say well, it's, it is even, a minority even, and they're stupid. You know, even if you think it, just don't put it in a public forum. Anyway, great result for Accrington. Focusing on what happened on the pitch, Colby Bishop back in great form, scoring uh, for the for his side and. Uh, the, the sending off changed the game clearly because I think it was nil nil, wasn't it, Ed? Before the before the red card, I believe it was the first major incident of the game. Yeah. Yeah, and then it, it just was obviously Fleetwood just could not could not compete uh, with an Accrington who had more space to play with. Yeah, they've got players who can really do do damage, and they, they're a good team, well coached, and uh, have got some really good individuals. So they they marched this one through to a a five one win, important win for them as well. Not being in in great shakes recently so um, nice victory for for Accrington unfortunately marred by like I say idiotic behaviour uh, Sunderland and Oxford drew 1-1 a game of two halves Oxford the best team in the first half and then decided to set up in a low block for most of the second half and it finished 1-1 um, Lee Johnson not doing himself many favours at the end what was this? that yeah. was blown way out of proportion that oh well I mean Sunderland fans aren't Happy that with him blown. because I've seen it back. About, it's, it's really not as bad as people make it out to be. No, well, apart, apparently being in the playoff spots in League One's not good enough for Sunderland. You know, two points within range of the automatics. What did, uh, what did Lee Johnson do? Sorry, I've missed it. I feel like I've missed something here. He, 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 he turned around to the um, Sunderland fans who were booing and hissing and whatever, and stuck two fingers up, um, which you know won't do him any favours when fans don't seem to be particularly happy with him. To be fair, it was like the Alamo in the second half. They they should have they should have won this. Uh, and if I'm Lee Johnson, I think it was Lyndon Gooch who, for the goal, dived to the floor to try and win a free kick. And it was there was no there was no contact. You know, he just fell over. You know, when you go into a corner of the of the pitch and you wait for someone to touch you, you fall over. It was that, but it was in the box, in his <laughs> own penalty area. And I think it was Nathan oh, Holland no. just just squared it to to Matty Taylor, who's tucked it away. Just if I'm Lee Johnson, I'm fuming at that because all, all Gooch had to do and I if, if it's not Gooch I apologise I think it was Sunderland number 11 all he had to do was thump it clear or even just knock it out for a corner there was no danger until he fell over looking for a free kick pathetic and you know Sunderland would have probably gone on to win that game if it if it wasn't for, for that um, who knows but one all draw in the end and uh, yeah I I can see why Sunderland fans might be frustrated but I actually thought on the day they Sunderland did all they could to win it <clears throat> Excuse me, and and in the end, uh, just just couldn't break us down. Uh, Simon Eastman making a, a really good save, palming a, a stinging shot onto the onto the outside of the post. I've actually say, seen it. I've, I've actually seen a few links of Lee Johnson switch, switch on Twitter, just scrolling through. Yeah, that's actually, Mark him. Ashton being. Linked. Yeah, the Mark Ashton Mark link. Ashton link. Anyone who Mark Ashton has worked with is being linked to the Ipswich job. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> Doesn't surprise me. And Steve Evans. Yeah, Steve Evans is linked to every job. I'm surprised he's not been linked with the old. Sounds like you're yet. desperate to get rid of him, David. <laughs> I mean, I'm not desperate to get rid of him. You're, are but... you his agent? Can I ask? You seem I to wish. be touting him for every job we talk about. I mean, I wish. I, 
I mean, I, to be fair, it's just literally looking at rumours and stuff. And obviously, he was linked with Stevenage. Didn't, that's obviously been filled by Tisdale. And then he's just being linked with every job. Like, every time a job is coming up, I'm just saying that he's linked with to, to be fair, he was linked to the Aldi Guildford store manager job as well. <laughs> Good role, Unless that's another Steve Evans. But yeah, well... <laughs> They'd ordered, a, a, they'd ordered an extra large uniform, so I, it must be him. Um, anyway, that brings us to the next uh, port of call on this podcast, and that is the mailbag. So let's let's jump in and, and take your questions. The D3, D4 mailbox. Your views, your say. Right, where to start? We have some really good questions. We also oh, have some, some headbangs. Let, let's start with uh, Nathan, Port Vale fan, seeing as Ed's just watched his team... Uh, capitulate to, to this lot uh, with Lloyd, Proctor and Wilson and now David Amu all out who should Vale target in January Ed who should they target as a striker in January well there's a good lad of Bayern Munich called Robert Lewandowski but I think he's a bit out of their range <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm not in Daryl Clark's system either really no it, it's, it's unfortunate for Vale really to be this period without the strikers now you know it's good that you can call upon someone like Dennis Politic to have a good impact, but he, I, he's still not, for me, naturally a striker. I think of him more as like a forward or an attacking midfielder. And Rodney's not quite living up to the level I've hoped he could be there, and George Lloyd's still quite a young lad. Um, he's, he's out as well, isn't he, George Lloyd? Yeah. It, it's an interesting one. You know, there's all this talk about James Norwood now, what his future is like away from it switch. I'd be a little bit surprised if he dropped to League Two, because I do think he's an absolute quality player when he's fully on it. But maybe that's doable. I don't know what the finances are like to Port Vale at the moment, how easy it will be for them to get another player in. Perhaps a good third round tie could give them the money they need for it. Ben House. Sign Ben House. Striker at Eastleigh. Really like him. He's going to go into the league at some point. Well, Kabongo Shimanga was supposed to be getting a football league move ages ago, but I don't think he's leaving Chesterfield anytime soon. Oh, he's happy where he is. I, I can't yeah. see him. And, and also, you know, like... It, I think Ben House's contract is up this summer, whereas so that that gives leverage. I'm not sure Shimunga is uh, out of contract this summer. He's, is he someone in the mould of James Wilson? Because that's what I'd be wanting them to get. Yeah, he's an intelligent hold-up striker who can score goals. Um, he's definitely going to. I like to say he's he's being looked at by EFL clubs as as I know. So it's definitely worth going for him. Um, there are others, of course, but that'd be my that'd be my pick if you can if you can persuade him to join. Um, who's who's the lad? Um, is it Bromley? Michael Cheek. Michael Cheek, yeah. He's yeah. not. He's had some decent form the last couple of seasons, hasn't he? It, it might be, guy, it, Solihull it might well. be worth taking a gamble it, on a national it, league striker, certainly. Joe Sabara at Solihull. Yeah, he's he's more of an attacking midfielder than a striker. He's very small size, but he's very good. But he's he? he's in very good form at the moment. He's very good. I like him. I I would, I would be tempted to take him. But uh, yeah, Port Vale with some injuries. Um, and, and that's that's perhaps where I would I would look. But thanks for the question, Nathan. Um, <laughs> Carlo, this is for David. Carlo says Donny or Ipswich for Steve Evans. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, that. to be honest with you, when I saw that question, I just thought to myself, I, just, I very much doubt he's going to go to either. Like his his contract with us is up at the end of the season. Like we're wanting 125k in compensation. There is no way anyone is paying that for Steve Evans. So he will be here till the end of the season, and then we'll get in one of the million different ex players. That... 25 grand. That's how much he wants in compensation. Yeah, but we'll be. It'll be a case of literally looking at, you know, anyone that's an ex player of ours. I imagine Hess and Tyler will probably be linked at some point. Again, and, yeah. Yeah, like, it just, you know, if you're not, if you're not, like, I, I actually think Steve Evans is one of the most sensible acquisitions we've made in terms of managerial appointments for many years. But I think it's just the controversial nature of him, his past that fans aren't necessarily happy about. But I'd rather him all day long than just have another ex-manager who's just spent all of their career in the National League. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. Uh, Ian Fairhead has asked, which team or teams have been your biggest disappointment so far this season in both leagues? Chris, any teams that have disappointed you, apart from Oldham? In... <laughs> to be fair, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised by Oldham, so I can't really count them. I mean, we've I mean, we touched, touched on it, Switch, but I've not you know, totally disappointed with them. 
Lincoln, I thought, would do better. Yeah, Lincoln, um, Lincoln for I, me, compared to where Lincoln I thought they'd me be. as well. Definitely. But I, I, I think Doncaster, to be honest, in League One. I saw I, this coming, though, with Doncaster, based I, I on what they were doing in the summer. I saw them having a challenging season, but I didn't think it would be this challenging. And especially with Wellens in charge, I expected something a bit better, and it's just not worked. And I will apologise for the dogs going mad downstairs. He, d- he clearly doesn't agree with your dog cast. <laughs> He's not happy with that. Yeah. Um, in League Two, I, I would say Carlisle. I, did, I know yeah, that I, was, I, I was just didn't see them doing this badly, frankly. I thought they'd be better than this. Um, I agree. I think I had them in I the really top. regret having high expectations at Bradford. I yeah, really regret that. yeah they've, they've been really uninspiring as well. They have, haven't they? They have been. Um, they need, they, I mean, they do need something in that squad added to it. I mean, they've had some injury problems and stuff, but yeah, you're right. Derek Adams going there with the reputation that he had built from his great spell at Morecambe. Um, one thing I would say, this is we're talking of Ipswich, by the way. Uh, Cole Stockton to Ipswich for Cash plus James Norwood. What do you reckon? That's a that's a good move. That way Morecambe get a, a, a striker back who who could fill that mould and Stockton goes to Ipswich to, for for Cash and, and fulfils his undoubted... Don't Ballon... Ipswich already have about 20 strikers? Ballon I was going to say, most of their summer say... acquisition was I think, just I think I saw people say Paul Cook and said this means Louis Barry gets game time at last. They've got so many options. They don't <laughs> really... It's more clearing out more than adding more, I would say. Yeah. I think that's what they wanted Cook to do on it, streamline the squad in January, but he's not going to get a chance to do that now. Well, uh, I, I imagine they're changing managers because they've lost, lost faith in him to be able to turn it round. do the job in January. They want someone I, will, I will say as well, going back to the question, despite the managerial appointment there, I would say that Bristol Rovers, for me, have probably been underachievers so far this season. Well, obviously, Barton Relative doesn't necessarily squad, help, but when you look at their squad, the fact that they've ju- like relegated from League One last season, league, like I would say League One level squad, they, they should probably be... You can't uh, lose this many much cup be- finals. Yeah, they should be much better than where they are. <laughs> yeah, cup finals, good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, I, although they might get their new stadium eventually, they've, they've bought land that is currently the fruit market in, in Bristol, not far from... Um, What's the name of the rail station? Bristol Temple Meads. Meads. Temple Meads, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so not far from there. So that'd be a great that'd be a great relocation, but obviously a lot of a lot of things need to come together before that gets uh, gets the go ahead. Uh, Dan Bacon, and I, I the answer's no, Dan. Uh, with our current form, injured players coming back, and maybe some strengthening in January, can Mansfield make a late <laughs> playoff charge? No, I love the optimism. I am not. I am not backing Mansfield ever again, Dan. I think Absolutely. we, if we back Mansfield to relegation, he'll get what he wants. Yeah, I, just, I think they're they're going down, man. <laughs> um, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I don't think any of us could. No one answer. No one answer. No one no. saying anything more. <laughs> I uh, think we just I heard, move on. Heard, just uh, move on. I heard Ed sigh in a thoughtful way, so move on. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, ben, ben David Jones asks which striker will try and miss splash the cash on in January. I just said that they're going to just move Lee Connor further forward until he becomes the a low. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, seems to happen every every time I see him. He's like, oh yeah, the right back's gone to defensive midfield. Oh now he's a central midfield. Oh now he's an attacking midfielder. This is very. It's the new version of Kieran Morris. They just put him where they fancy. Yeah, yeah that's it. Do, do we see Tramir? I mean, they obviously have been linked to Norwood because. He did so well there, but do you think and they will bring in a a tried and tested striker? To, really. I think it's likely. I, I, I'm so desperate to pull Glatt sort of work out because I do think there's a really good player in there, but it, they just haven't found that effective forward yet. As much as I've enjoyed Nevitt's performances at times, yeah, they, they need a forward, but I, I don't know who you get really. Who's I can see it minute. being Norwood, to be fair. Maybe. Maybe. Everyone wants well, a striker that'll, that'll though. Be that's the the thing. That'd be the interesting one, wouldn't it? January. Maybe that did happen. Everybody wants a striker in January, so it's very competitive. I mean, who's who's shocked that Emmanuel Desure didn't work out? Mm. <laughs> uh, he, he showed so much promise at Salford and Oldham. Yeah. Getting back at Oldham. Oh, dear. With number fifty, what was it, fifty-five, fifty-six on his back? You had massive high squad numbers at the end of that, that was, year. Yeah, that was when. That was the, I think that was the Paul Scholes season, wasn't it? Uh, is Lauren Benid progressing yeah. into... Yeah, it was, I don't know if you can yeah. dub it Paul Scholes season. No, because no, 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 he... Paul Scholes month. <laughs> no, no, because I think he was the one that, that brought this worth in. Right. Because he, he, he 
I thought Dino I... Dino brought him in. <laughs> Dino brought him in. Did he? I think yeah. Dino did, yeah. Yeah, Dino it's brought a... him in. We've had too many managers, honestly. So uh, well, we know that. That's what all of them do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, uh, Matt says, are Dale flying under the radar? Rochdale, that is. Or yeah, are they yeah, set up yeah. for a mid-table mediocrity? I think I, they're set up for mid-table, to be honest. I, I think they're set up for mid-table, but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised because I thought they'd struggle this season. Well, let me give you that. Yeah, they've been better than I thought, definitely. They are second best team for XG from open play in League 2, behind only Swindon. However, being Rochdale, they are also <laughs> something like the fifth or sixth worst for XG against yeah, in the division. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right. It's, it's the Barry Murphy... You know, legacy. It's not Barry Murphy anymore, it's Stockdale. That's why I said legacy. It's leg- oh, legacy. Did legacy. <laughs> <laughs> I did say legacy. Bit. Sorry. The thing with Rochdale as well, though, that you've got to take into account, which um, it was very difficult for David Stockdale, was the fact that they had to recruit a certain kind of. Robbie player. Stockdale. Sorry, Robbie Stockdale. David Stockdale's a keeper. Yeah, I'm terrible at first. He's doing a good job, isn't he? Keeping and being Rochdale, aren't you? I think you've underappreciated how difficult the off the field situation has been at Rochdale. Yeah, yeah, that's what. He he basically had to sign youngsters um, of you know players of a certain age of a certain type. If you look at the guys he brought in, he didn't really get to sign sort of experienced League Two um, or low league sort of caliber. He brought in a lot of good potential. Uh, and, and they, and but they've had all sorts of strange ownership deals going on, and there and, is and the, the the East Street Investments chap who we we talked well, about. Well, I think that's gone away now. I hope so. Oh, <laughs> I really certainly, do. certainly, oh. Rochdale's trust were celebrating the fact that they've won. But yeah, I think mid- unless they can tighten up the giving away these sort of chances that they do at the back, then yeah, no. Um, I, I think they will. I think they'll sort of be up a mid table at best. Um, but they're an exciting team to watch. They've got Liam Kelly, which is a great signing. That's a fantastic yeah. signing. I like Dooley. I think Morley and Dooley, um, <laughs> great. Marley and Marley. It makes me laugh every time. It's a fun it name to say. It's a great name to say. It's a great name to say. Morley and Dooley. Morley and Dooley. They're, they're brilliant. They're brilliant pet partnership in midfield. Though I think um, they've been broken up a little bit with Kelly coming in. So. Kelly getting involved with Marley and Dooley's relationship. It's a triangle. It's vicious. Uh, it's a soap opera in there somewhere. Anyway, anyway, I, 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 terrible tangents. It, yeah, I think they will be mid-table. I think they'll be mid-table. We'll see, though, what Robbie Stockdale, not David, <laughs> can bring in in general. <laughs> uh, right, Gertrude. Or Gertrude, yeah, Gertrude has said, have Forest Green peaked too early? I do not believe in peaking no. too early. I believe no. in a 46-game no. season, you get as many points on the board yeah. as you possibly can in whatever way you can do it. And The thing with Thoris Green is, I, I kind of get this. There's a, I remember talking with a couple of late Norwich lads. Thoris Green last couple of seasons have started strong and then fallen away. We've noticed that. And there's kind of a bit of expectation. I think some people are going to do it again. Yeah, this no is Mark different, Cooper. though. No it's Cooper. not Mark Cooper's manager. It's a really positive environment they've got there with Robin Edwards. They have a squad that's incredibly well balanced, particularly in midfield and defensive areas. They're not reliant on one guy for the goals. They've got goals of both Matty Stevens and Jamil Matt as their forwards. So if they lose one, it doesn't matter. And they've never had a start of this good. They are flying right they now. Do. It's never been this strong. It's going to do very well to stop them. I mean, they're six points in front of second. Pl- yeah, six points in front of second place with a game in hand. Yeah. The only like... thing that I think could hold them back, and I don't know if this might be another question, but. I think if they had a period where they were without both Nicky Cadden and Ken Wilson, it would hurt them. Because yes. that's a lot of their creativity gone. Yeah. They don't you know, have, without they Ken don't Wilson have at the minute, but they can still make do with Cadden in there. If they lost both of them for like a couple of months, you'd probably notice it. Yeah. They don't it's have... just mad at this stage of the season as well. That they, I think they've scored the most goals in the league and conceded the joint least as well. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. 40 points from 18 games is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic return. Uh, great team. And no, I don't think they've peaked too early. I just think you you just got to get as many points on the board as quickly as you can in, in the divisions. And if you have a blip, it's, you've it's got almost, a cushion, It's almost you know? likely they're going to come across a bit of a grey patch of form because that's what happens to most teams. Hmm. But, you'd but, expect, but with the you'd strong position to... they're in, I don't think it'll hurt as much as it has in the past. No, exactly. You'd expect a slight grey patch, but you but wouldn't if... imagine that they wouldn't be... I think it's... Maybe I'm speaking too early, but you wouldn't imagine that they wouldn't be away from that kind of top three area this season. No. With, with how they and, al- and also, you're going to be relying on all the other teams not slipping up, you know, and that's not good. That generally doesn't happen. It's going to be a, a very good team to overtake for a screen. Um, 
That's for sure. Uh, ben Wallace says, which League One to stroke League Two <laughs> manager would you would be the best company at the pub and who would be the worst? Be- Dan Bacon replied here. I love this reply. Oh, it's a good reply. <laughs> yeah, he said, best. John Yams shares his crisps and put crackers on the jukebox. Has an interesting way of telling anecdote. Worst. Mark Cooper never gets a round in and chews the ear off the barmaid moaning about how oh, shit his Mark colleagues Cooper's are. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Completely. I, I did I have Mark that. Cooper down as my worst. I would go for Gareth Ainsworth for me. Oh, bench. Ainsworth at the pub would, yeah. Yeah, the quality. I see that, definitely. Yeah. I, I would, I'm not sure Paul Tisdale would be a great company at pub. I think he'd philosophically analyse the origins of every spirit behind the bar. Oh, he, he, he'd be a proper, like, ale knob. He'd be telling you, sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> Make that the title. What, there's the title of the podcast? <laughs> Make that the title. You get away with it. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you'd, yeah. you'd have all the ales out and you'd be describing it. I'm thinking as well, like, the best. detail, the flavour like, of every single yeah. one. Oh. I'm thinking as well, like, for the best, like, one of the younger guys, maybe Johnny Jackson or Mark Bonner, I feel like they're just still, like, better company. It's not like you and, like, some guys, like, 30, 40 years older than you and it feels a bit awkward. Is it so, acceptable to put the same manager for both? Don't say Steve Evans. <laughs> I will not give my answer. <laughs> I, I, I think it's Keith Cole. I, I think I think Kenny Jacket might sort of leave at eight pm for bed. I don't think he'd stay very long. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, I do. I just, yeah, I think uh, I think I struggle with Paul Tisdale. I think he'd, he'd like you say, he'd analyse every every ale and tell you how he'd make them better. Uh, do you guys think Paul Warren could be the best one for this? Oh, that's a good shout, actually. Yeah, he'd be good. Just all by it now. Just doing push-ups on the bar, you know. (laughs) Anyway, uh, a serious question now from Sam, who says, what's a weakness of each of the teams in the promotion and perf places in League 2? Right. I've done some research for this, if you want me to take the uh, the lead. Yes, please do. (laughs) Number one, Forest Green. I've got none, because they've basically been fantastic. Well, it's like I said, if they lose their wing-backs, that's to me. That's not that's a weakness, so though. If you, if you said that if every well, player is, on the team like got injured... injury to a couple of key players, so that, that's where I think their depth is lowest, if they lose those two well, wing-backs. That's like saying with, if an airplane didn't level. have its wings, it couldn't fly. <laughs> Give over. I, to be fair, I think, I think if you're going... Yeah, but if you're going based on that, I think the only thing that I could see at the moment would just be simply overconfidence, and yeah, just that complete. they just get ahead of themselves. Bit of complacency is what I've written down that's here. One of those an- that's one of those answers for a job interview. It's like, what's your what's your worst trait? Or oh, I'm just too I hate confident. when you ask that. It's like, what's your weakness? <laughs> I've never really thought about it. Like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not very. You should you say know, if anyone asks you that. Much. What's your weakness? Answering questions based upon what my weaknesses are. Yeah, you that's just, a good. You answer. just tell them that you, you've got a really bad theft problem. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, that's if you don't want the job. Uh, <laughs> also, I think Forest Green, because they've started so well, uh, it's not really a weakness for them, but it might be a challenge that they have to overcome with teams just turning up in a low block and and yeah. making it very difficult for them. That that might be something. Uh, Northampton in second. I think they need to create a bit more. They've scored 25 goals, which is the lowest of the teams currently in the top eight. Uh, but they're overall a pretty solid outfit. I think they've got decent depth in most areas. Uh, but they do lack, I think, if, if you lose Sauber and McWilliams in midfield, they don't have players who can easily slot in and replace them. We've seen Jordan Flores try it. Um, but They're I, a bit more attack-minded than the rest of their midfielders, aren't they, really? Yeah, so I think... I think Which that, is... That I think that makes own. it even... Does, doesn't that make it more, even more interesting that their defensive record is one of the best in the league, yet their goal-scoring record is not fabulous? Well, that's their only weakness, really, for me. Their defence is great, but they, they don't necessarily create the best or highest number of good quality chances and they they haven't quite got the same number of goals in them as some of their competitors but they're a very very good team nonetheless sitting second Uh, Swindon in third I'd say home form 10 points home form possible uh, 27 points they could have got they've only got 10 at the county ground lack of striker depth as well Lou Simpson for a period and they feel it yeah yeah, they don't score enough from set pieces either joint lowest in the division with just two scored from set pieces Swindon Town uh, so those, but definitely home form is my. That's the loss of Scott Twine, though, isn't it? That's really showing. Possibly, but I think also, like we say, they just don't. They don't have, apart from Simpson, they don't really have that archetypal goal scorer. You know, they don't. They, and he, even he's still a player in in a lot of development. Uh, Exeter City, too many draws. Need to 
give away fewer good scoring chances because they have quite a high XGA compared to some of the teams. Um, I think it's a joint... So from open play, their XGA is joint worst in top eight. And they've only... Again, they are the also the joint worst scorers from set pieces with just two scored this season. So... Uh, but they're a good team, and I think they'll they'll come good if they can if they can turn the draws that they had into wins. Because they had a 20 game unbeaten spell. Imagine if they'd won a couple more of them. They they the only team I reckon that can probably challenge Forest Green for supremacy. Uh, Port Vale very difficult to find weaknesses for Port Vale. Very solid yeah. outfit. Uh, apart from the fact that they've now got injuries to four key attacking players. <laughs> I would also say as well, speaking of a couple of Vale fans yesterday, they seem to have a bit of an issue with high balls into the box as well. It's how Burton got their goal yesterday from it as well. Yeah, def- yeah, we saw that against Sutton, didn't we? Um, yeah, and and they were a bit bullied by Walsall in that uh, defeat the other week. So yeah, I'd I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Uh, Sutton, their weakness for me is they've conceded seven goals from set pieces, which is one of the highest number in the division. So that's their that seems to be their weakness. They don't have many. Um, they don't have a huge amount of of depth compared to some of their competitors, but it's better than the the next team I'm coming to, which is Harrogate, whose weaknesses really are a lack of squad depth and the fact they've conceded 24, which is the most in the top half of the division. Uh, so those are the two weaknesses I pick out for Harrogate. I did do Leighton Orient and Newport, just Leighton Orient's killer instinct, drawn 10. That's most in the division. Uh, they have a very high XGA from set pieces, 8.1, third worst in the in the league with only Carlisle and Colchester worse than them uh, and Newport I said only 12 points at home from 24 and they've conceded 23 so their defensive record is also a little bit wayward but there you go those are the the weaknesses for those sides I hope that's kind of covered it off um, but they're all good they're all pretty good teams uh, right is there any other questions? Ah, yes, there is. <laughs> We're not doing that one. <laughs> would you rather? Please, I know it's, oh. please. Would you rather be locked in a room with ten Joey Barton-sized Steve Evans or five Steve Evans-sized Joey Bartons, Ed? Well, like with last time, I'm going with the smaller number, just because I think there's less of them to deal with. But I, th- I think that's five Steve to... Evans-sized Joey Bartons. No, it's it's ten Joey Barton size Steve Evans or five Steve Evans size Joey Barton's because yeah Steve Evans the five option yeah but that's five Steve Evans it's still size... more, less than ten you've got less to deal with I'll stand by that oh, are we thinking are we thinking we're going to fight this or are we just like you're just locked in a room with them it doesn't well, you're in a room you're with them aren't you you've got less than them if, if you're locked in a room with five Steve Evans size Joey Barton's there's going to be a fight there's also going to be there's ten. Joe there's also Steve going Evans to be a lack well. of oxygen as well. I think. I think the real question well, here is: Would you rather? Have, I feel like the real question <laughs> here is: Would you rather have someone shout and swear at you constantly, or would you just have someone touting that they should be in a promotion place constantly? No, in your face? they would both, both shout, shout and swear, and swear at me. <laughs> right, but I mean, where can I hide in there? <laughs> how big is the room? They don't specify. <laughs> That's a real uh, let's just say it's average. Room. Just like your average room. What's an average room, room size? <laughs> six, six by four. That's an average room. Six by four. Yeah. I, I, that's I, quite a big, that's quite generous for an okay, average room. I think, I think <laughs> what we're in the family is that there's a COVID threat. Well, Steve Evans would be, he, he hates being in confined spaces. He was, he was complaining that the benches of other teams were far too close to him last season. Oh, um, come on. If you look at, I'm not being funny, the one that we've got at Priestfield isn't exactly far apart. No, no. Uh, but it, it's very. It's apparently, very he can't reach across it though and shake it. hands with Danny Cowley, so it can't be that. Yeah. Can't be that I mean, to be fair, they both walked onto the pitch, so they wouldn't have done it there anyway. But <laughs> um, hmm, it's a very interesting question. Uh, the thing is, right, if you have <clears throat> ten Joey Bartons in a room, even you know ten Joey Barton size Steve Evans, and you're I... in an uh, area of the country where you get a cold front, right? You've got a very serious tornado risk because hot air rises and if you've got 10 Joey Barton size Steve Evans there's a lot of hot air there you know so when hot air rises and meets a cold front and you get like it cooling and fall you could have a very big tornado on your hands if you're not careful to the people listening I'm so sorry that you're having to put yourself through this (laughs) it's a very serious question Ed I (laughs) You know, we have to draw on all our knowledge of physics and science to even contemplate these kinds of things. And in fairness, it is the most popular question out of all of the ones that we... I knew it would be, because he asked no to those Steve Evans (laughs) and Joey Barton questions, and then he got one. It's got 52 likes, to be fair, so... 
Out of the two, I think Steve Evans is a more reasonable man out of the two. That's and so, very difficult to judge, though, isn't it? I, I think it would be easier to have a conversation with Steve Evans than Joey Barton. And so on that basis, I'm going for the 10 Joey Barton size like Steve Evans. burning's worse than drowning. I yes. think it, oh, they're yes. both horrible. But they're both there's horrible. No, there's no easy way around this. I, I, I've got to pick the one that I think is the least worst. Okay, so I think that the least worst for me as a Gillingham fan would just be the ten Jerry size, Jerry Barton size Steve Evans, just because we could both moan about the injury crisis uh, of Jills, and we oh, could just spend lots of time. Yeah, we could just spend spend lots of time moaning about why Jills. I don't think David should have an in input in this because he has affinity towards one of the people. <laughs> Well, I don't think David should be allowed to answer this. I, I, don't, I don't think we can ask Steve Evans' agent to comment on this. This is oh. not, not fair. To be, so to right, be honest, next though... next season, I'll, I'll sign Jerry Barton as well. I'll have them both. You'll just spend all your time with 10 Jerry Barton size Steve Evans filling out his CV and sending it off to every single club in League 1 and 2 yep. and probably the championship. <laughs> but that's okay, because we can literally just post it out of the door and someone else can do that, because we're locked in. So. Yeah. Anyway, let's end this and the podcast <laughs> right here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, indeed. Well, guys, thank you for uh, coming at this with such an open mind. It's been uh, it's been interesting, um, if slightly surreal, frankly. Uh, but there we go. That's us done for another week. Um, appreciate everyone who sent questions in, by the way. Always great to have input. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do to the guy who BW to the guy who asked that Steve Evans question, you are now blocked. By the way, just <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, thanks for listening. You've been great as always. Uh, we'll be back next week and talking about. I, I promise you, no more stuff like this. It'll be it'll be about football next week, um, and it'll also be Chris's last returns. podcast with us for uh, several months till, till, till the middle of March at least. Yeah. You know, Oldham are going to be in the playoffs when you're back. Yeah, I, I hope so. I really hope so. Well, until then, uh, not until March, sorry. I mean, until next week. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be back. See you soon, guys. Take care.